Need LASIK? Trust the experienced team at the LASIK Center at Evergreen Eye Center. No glasses, no contacts, no limits. What will you do? LASIK at evergreen.com. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal's second date update. For today's second date update, a listener named Robert is on the phone, and his email started off by saying kids make dating difficult. Oh, yeah, that's Ooh, yeah. true. I didn't really read more after that. I just wanted to get him on the phone because, Robert, why are you dating kids? Oh, my no, God. That's that's so of course, it's going to be difficult. I wasn't dating kids. <laughs> difficult and illegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things wrong with that, yeah. Robert. No, actually, I have a kid. I'm a single parent. Oh. Makes sense. Makes so much more sense now, Robert. All right. And? Okay. You, you have a kid, and somehow it made a date difficult for you? Yes. Okay. What happened? So um, I met this young lady, Rebecca, online. Okay. And did you, were you upfront right from the beginning that you were a father? Yes, I was. Actually, okay. she's also a single parent. So uh, I thought right off the bat we had that commonality right and who better to understand how dating is difficult when you're a single parent than another single parent dating exactly you know and it's hard enough right now to even like have the time to even manage to meet someone you know let alone finding a match just like scheduling wise with work yeah it's got to be a lot to handle so you you met her on a dating app yeah we were uh chatting uh eventually i had a plan to meet for dinner and um <laughs> Right before, about an hour, an hour and a half before the date, I forgot about my son's b-ball game. And, uh, Uh-oh. yeah, okay. uh, he had a game that night, and I felt awful. Um, I had to call Rebecca to cancel. I was, you know, very apologetic. And did you have to cancel because you just wanted to be there or because you had to take him to the basketball game? I forgot that I had to take him to oh, the game. Man. Why don't okay. you just put him on the bus and go do whatever you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, that no, actually that? could work. How old is this kid? He's six years old. Okay, six. so that won't work. Oh, Never mind. Oh, crush yeah. him. He's yeah. got to be seven to ride the bus by himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you called her to cancel? Yeah. And to my surprise, she suggested, well, why don't we both go? Hey. Oh, yeah. She's a mom. She probably understands That's your struggle. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I was uh, somewhat shocked. I mean, I thought, how cool is that? You know, she Yeah, was, why uh, not use my six-year-old's basketball game as a dating opportunity? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I figured, you know, she was just really cool to even suggest that. Yeah, that's cool. It shows that she's pretty easy going. How was uh, the date at your kid's basketball game then? It was really good. She was very supportive. Did you get seats right up front? Some good seats. <laughs> yeah. He got courtside yeah. court court at the six-year-old basketball game. We had front row seats. She was cheering him on. Really cool. Every time they had they had the ball, every time he had the ball, very supportive. Um, was he like, who's the strange lady cheering me on, Dad? <laughs> Actually, they met right before the game, so it wasn't that weird. Okay. That's good. Um, at halftime, I should mention this, uh, there was a little romance that actually ensued during the game. Ooh. Okay. What happened? She, uh, you know, she got a little hungry. I said, I'll be right back. I'll uh, get some food. And she was like, I'll tell you what, if you bring me some popcorn, I'll give you a kiss. And <laughs> I was like, back in a flat. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even have popcorn. You had to like drive to a movie theater to find some. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. I had to leave. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, she gave me a kiss when I got back. Um, the second half started. She was cheering, cheering, cheering. My kid's team lost, unfortunately. Um, That's probably why she's not calling you back. She wants a winner. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I mean, actually, Rebecca was saying, good job, you know, very consoling. Even You know, they lost. And, and that's where like, don't lie to the kid. He played terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She was, she was really cool, I have to say. And I was, um, you know, I was even thinking, wow, this is like, this is wife material. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa. That's quick. Okay. That's quick jump. Well, you know, she... Our first day where, you know, she's hanging out with me and my yeah. kid. We went to dinner afterwards, and we had, a, you know, a great conversation. Uh, our kids have a lot in common. They're only a couple of years apart. Did your son come to dinner with you guys, too? Yeah, he came with us, and it was a lot of fun. He was asking a lot of questions about school, about sports. And, uh, you know, he was very comfortable with her. So, I mean, I couldn't help but think that this would be a possible, you know, candidate here okay well okay. other than just the kid stuff did you like her did she seem like you 
Yeah, she. It seemed like we had a spark. I mean, I mean, she wouldn't have given me a kiss. I don't think if she didn't like me. Good yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point. I don't know. Popcorn's pretty good. I do a lot of things for popcorn. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> All right. How did everything end with her then? I dropped her off. Uh, said good night. She gave me a hug. Um, she said goodbye to my son. And here we are. That was two weeks ago. I, I haven't heard from her. I've been trying to get a hold of her, text her. I called her once. Huh. So it's, you know, just really disappointing. Like I said earlier, it's really hard to uh, find a time to meet someone. I don't know, like, if I might have said something to offend her. Huh. You know, it's really frustrated. Okay, well, we'll play a song, come back, and then call her and get your second date update, all right? Sounds good. Okay, man, hang on. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the Mornings. Second date update. If you're just tuning in for today's second date update, Robert is on the phone, and he took... The girl that he wants to call today, her name is Rebecca, to a sporting event. Always a good <laughs> idea. Unless, of course, it's a six-year-old's basketball game. What was the score, by the way, Robert? Uh, nine to six? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's actually even less than that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Good job, kids. Good yeah. job. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, Robert actually forgot that he had his kid the night that he scheduled a date with Rebecca. She has a kid, too. And he had to take him to a basketball game. And Rebecca actually was like, fine, I'll go. So they went to the basketball game and then had dinner after. He said everything went great. He even got a kiss in the middle of the game. And now she's not calling him back and he can't figure out why. You ready to get her on the phone, Robert? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I just really want to find out why she hasn't gotten back to me. I can't figure it out. I'm completely baffled. So I want to, I just want to hear the truth. I just want to okay. find out what, what the deal is. All right. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to dial her phone number right now and see if we can figure it out. Here we go. Hello? Hey, is this Rebecca? Um, y- yes. Hello, Rebecca. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. What are you doing? <laughs> Tell people talk uh, on the phone. Who is this? Hey, this is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. It's a radio <laughs> show. Yeah, sorry about that. What? Who is this, really? My name is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. It's a radio show. <laughs> I talk like people do understand it you're, you're calling me from the radio right now yes yeah. yes yeah. how are you um uh, i'm fine. you sound confused is what you sound <laughs> what? Yeah, could it be the accent is, or could it be the radio part who knows i what i what is this about well we do a segment on our show it's called the second date update and you went out with a dude named robert a little while ago uh, oh yeah okay yeah and robert emailed us because he told us all about your date, and he also told us that wow. you aren't calling him back or returning any of his text messages, and he was wondering why. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. What? I don't... Is this... This is for real? Yeah. It is, unless you haven't gone out with a guy named Robert. Yeah. No, I, I did. I, okay. I did. So, yeah. Is there a particular reason you don't want to see Robert again? You know, I... Uh, <laughs> I just, I just don't think that Robert and I will work out in the end. That's all. He doesn't Aww. see that at all. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> can you give us any information to give to him? I mean, that's why we do these, is so people can figure out what they're doing wrong in dating. And Robert really wants to know, especially when he said that you kissed him in the middle of the date. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. He, I, okay, so he... Yeah, wow. he told us. He told us. Yeah, he did tell us yeah. that. Whoa. Either you liked him or you really liked the popcorn that you traded the kiss for. <laughs> oh, my. Are you kidding me? Right? Oh. This is. I thought it was cute, oh, boy. Though. Yeah, if um... somebody kisses me in the middle of a date, I usually think the date is going well. Yeah. But it sounds <laughs> like, you know. Well, so... it, was, it was going well then. Okay. <laughs> so when did it change? Well, oh, my. Okay, so I don't know if he told you, but we went out to dinner afterwards after Uh this game and um this thing happened at dinner and it was just weird and awkward and it it, it was kind of a big deal and i i honestly i i can't get it out of my head and i just i mean it's it's that big and i just it's that big it's It's that big it's so big it's you guys she's not talking about that that at dinner The six-year-old was at dinner with them. What are oh, you talking about? Well, I hope that didn't happen then. <laughs> oh, my God, Rebecca. Am I right? I'm Am sorry. I reading into what you're no, saying, right, Rebecca? You mean the situation. It was the situation. Oh, okay. 
What did Can you, you tell us what happened? Oh my God. He's can... really curious. Okay. Um, we finished eating dinner, and his son asked for some ice cream, and this, his kid is six. Mm-hmm. And so Robert tells him, no, he can't have ice cream. Yeah. Then he literally said, well, your team lost, and ice cream is for winners. Oh. <laughs> ice cream is for winners. Wow. wow. What was the Damn. kid's response? He just like he looked so sad and defeated, oh. like he had already like lost his game. Like it was, <laughs> it was their. I mean, they're six. They couldn't reach the basket. Like nobody scored. It was yeah. the worst. Like right, it was like <laughs> one basket was the winning. And like, and then he just looked so sad and oh. like just heartbroken. Like it was just this simple little request after dinner, and it was just so harsh. And it was. It was heartbreaking. Like, I have my own kid, and I would never, like, it broke my heart. I, I just thought, like, what a jerk. But well, I don't think know, about that like, the next time they lose a game. Yeah. Then. <laughs> I know you guys are joking, but growing up, my dad was my softball coach forever, and when we were in elementary school, we only got ice cream when we won. Not my parents. You always I don't got know. ice cream. I, but that was, like, understood going into it. Like, if we win, we get ice cream. If we don't, we go home. Oh, wow. I mean, that's harsh for a kid, I yeah. think. I just think, like, it's ice cream. It's it's not like, what are we teaching? I want to teach my, my kids that there's more than just, like, what the final score is in a basketball game. That that's, Well, did like... you ask him what his, like, philosophy was with the no ice cream thing? No, I didn't. But, I mean, his son was right there, and he just looked so sad. And, I mean, I didn't want to make a thing of it in front of his kid. Right, because that's get into a whole big conversation. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'll buy him some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> and we were done then. I mean, dinner was over. I just wanted to leave then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it seems like oh. you could at least have told them, like, hey, our parenting theories don't match up. They don't. Our parenting skills are very different, but I just didn't want to make a thing of it in front of his son. Well, he is on the phone listening right now and wants to talk to you. <laughs> he, wait, he, he's where? I don't know. I'm somewhere, but he's on the phone. Like, I don't know where he's physically sitting, if that was your question, but he is on the other line and wants to talk to you. I hope you're joking. Hi, Rebecca. Nope, not joking. That's Robert. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, if you had a problem, like, this is the problem, you should have uh, told me about it. You should have brought it up to me. I mean, my son knows the rules at home. You know, when you win, you get ice cream. You don't win, nothing. Oh. Well, I think it was it was pretty clear if you were listening to my whole call that I feel differently about winning versus losing and rewards and something as simple as ice cream. You did see your son's face, right? You broke his heart. It was the saddest thing to see his face like that. He's six he years old. He wasn't running hard enough. He could have run faster. <laughs> they lost. I mean, you know, I have to be tough on my son. You know, six. I'm trying to prepare my son for adulthood. You know, you, know you, have to, you have to work hard. You have to win. Yeah, when he's the next like CEO of some major company and writes a book called Ice Cream is for Winners, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, I mean, what, what is the purpose of, of doing the ice cream only for winning? Give him motivation so he can work harder. You know, I teach him to play hard, to be a winner, to give it his all, not to have <laughs> it on the basketball court. Whoa. I mean, if you have a different parenting style, I mean, that's probably quite obvious in the way that you were you were brought up in the way the way you're like raising your kid, maybe I don't know. So you're judging me right now. That's what's happening. You're judging me because I would give my kid ice cream in this situation. Absolutely. Whoa. I believe that ice cream is for winners. <laughs> I believe that wholeheartedly. Okay. And if you don't agree with that, then maybe you're the one that's not being a good parent. Whoa, Jeez. dude! Shots fired. I mean. All I can say is that this basketball was more than half the size of your child. You think he needs to run faster? He like he's six years old. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand this like food for winning thing. I mean, you didn't even you brought me some plain dry popcorn. You didn't put butter or salt on this popcorn, <laughs> and I still gave you a kiss. So how about that, Robert? I'll tell you why you gave me a kiss. It's because I'm a winner, Rebecca. Oh my God, <laughs> Rebecca, I am so sorry for defending this guy for a moment before we actually talk to him. Yeah, if you have to identify yourself as a winner, that is the most loser thing you could possibly do. Yeah, that is true. Well, in that case, would you like to go on a second date with Robert, Rebecca? We will pay for it. Oh, my God. No. No. You sure you don't want to think about it some more? 
definitely still know like, even more know than it was that first night. Dude, and Robert, lighten up on your six-year-old, man. That's intense. My son is going to thank me in about 20 years from now when he's making seven-figure salary, <laughs> thanking that his dear old dad pushed him harder on the basketball court for oh one that God. little bit more than the other kids. Oh. You know, you have to be tough in this oh. world. And if you guys there in the recording studio don't agree with that, then I, I sincerely suggest you like look at your own lives and how you were brought up and how you're raising your own children. Oh, my God. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That I'm sure intense. he's going to be thanking yeah. you, or his therapist is, for all the money he's going to have to pay. And, Rebecca, I see the future, and it will be your child washing my son's car. Whoa! <laughs> Dude, rude! You're crazy. You're like a crazy human. Like, of course you are. You called the radio to try to deal with this. You couldn't even read my social signs on the ride home that you that you were treating your kid like a like he is a CEO. He's six. He's. A, I mean, it was a big deal. He got his shorts to stay up for the, the whole thing. Like, <laughs> Come on. Good boy. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. I think I said it all. Yeah, I think we are. Rebecca said she doesn't want to go out with you again, so you do not get a second date, Robert. Loser. You say loser, I say winner. <laughs> okay. And all you guys can go to hell. Oh, all right, well, dang. you don't get a second date, so I'm guessing no ice cream after this whole <laughs> phone call for you, Robert. But keep winning. Brooke and Jubal in the morning. Well, it's a text in at 78592 saying, He's right. Ice cream is for winners. These stupid millennials and their participation trophies. <laughs> Talking People about today's fired up. second yeah. date update. Yeah, they are very fired up on the text message board. It's also <laughs> very slip, slip, very split. A lot of different parenting techniques out there. Definitely. If you missed the second date update, this dude Robert wanted to call Rebecca. He's a single father. She's a single mother. He scheduled a date, but he forgot that he had to take his son to his basketball game that night. And she was like, well, I'll just come with you. Mm -hmm. So they went. He actually got a kiss at halftime. But she stopped calling him back. And the reason was because after they went out, after they went to the game, they went out to dinner and his son wanted ice cream. And he just said, sorry, ice cream is for winners. Yeah. Which is a quote that will now go down in second date history. Totally. And she said she didn't like the fact that she, he wouldn't get his son ice cream because he didn't win the game. So she didn't want to go out with him again. But yeah, it's very split on the text message board. I Some people are saying like, I agree. Ice cream is for winners. Yeah. And if and getting everybody ice cream is what creates snowflakes yeah. these days, <laughs> run to your safe space. And then other people political. like, everybody should get ice cream. I, I was with him. You could say no to your kid for ice cream. That's no big deal. But then he started attacking her parenting style and calling her a bad mom. I'm like, okay, yep. you're the jerk at the sideline of the kids game <laughs> who's yelling at the coach and is way too Obnoxious. aggressive yourself. And then he attacked all of us and how our parents were. And I'm like, dude, my dad tried to fight refs at every single game. <laughs> yeah. Look how I turned yeah. out. We should be friends. Yeah. I actually almost broke a guy's nose at a game once because I was angry at my dad yelling at me, so I hit the guy in the face so I get kicked out of the game yeah. so I didn't have to hear it anymore. Look at that's not a snowflake. That's nope. just real solid parenting. Look at where I, where yeah. I went to. Very dark places in my life. Remember, if you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show. We will call the person who didn't call you back. Moving 92.5. Wait, is that the hottest rapper in the game right now? What? No. What? That's just laser stories. Oh, man. The segment where we read weird news stories from around the globe, just like every other radio show does, except we have a laser, and those other idiots don't. This first laser story is out of South Burlington, Vermont. A 29-year-old guy named Michael Gonzalez ordered a pizza the other night, and... Thought he was, and he thought he saw the delivery car pull up. Okay. So he cool. went outside and walked up to the car to pay for it. Sweet. But somehow, probably because it was nighttime, Michael failed to realize that it wasn't the pizza guy, it was a cop car. Ooh. It doesn't sound like that. I mean, I get it. Like, the sirens could look yeah. like a pizza sign. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an unmarked car. It was an actual police cruiser. So he came to the window. And one of the officers thought he recognized Michael from somewhere. Uh-oh. And then the cops ended up running his name. And sure enough, he had an outstanding warrant. Oh, no. <laughs> you go from that high, like, yeah, yes, pizza. pizza. Oh. Oh. To like, oh, no, I'm going to jail. So they arrested him, and they found a small amount of heroin and ecstasy in his pockets as uh, well. Go! Oh, dang, bro. Yeah. But then they realized he was with a friend who was also wanted for petty larceny and arrested him, too. I think it was really awkward when the pizza guy finally did show up and they were both in handcuffs. Like, yeah. oh, Can so... I still get them to pay for this? Because yeah. boss is going to be angry if I take this pizza back. <laughs> He's doing court yesterday, but we haven't had any updates yet. No word on what happened to the pizza. Oh. This next laser story is out of Frankfurt, Germany. 
A 24-year-old dude named Leon Berger walked into a police station last week, and he asked to speak with an officer. Okay. And he told the person at the front desk that it was a serious matter. So oh. what was his issue? Well, Leon's problem was a personal one. He wanted to break up with his girlfriend, but he didn't know how to do it. Oh. That's right. Well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think police, though, are the ones to give you advice. Like, maybe a best friend, even a mom. Yeah. A neighbor. Apparently, he just did not understand her anymore. Uh-huh. Okay. So one of the female officers took him aside and proposed several alternative scenarios. That's but nice of them. like, heard him out? That's kind of cool. The police force did not describe what options had been suggested to Leon, but they were very clear that the actual breaking up was a job he would have to do himself. Yeah. Oh, man, you guys can't just go yeah. tell it for me. Can I call 911 or whatever it is in Germany that we call? <laughs> the police even said, quote, we are willing to advise, but we cannot close the deal. That is up to the individual. <laughs> Whether or not Leon took the advice and broke up with his girlfriend, we don't know, but they go the extra mile in Germany. Yeah. You know what? That is uh, community policing at yeah. its best. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> this next extra story is out of Kentucky. Harold Holland and Lillian Barnes got married on Christmas Eve way back in 1955. He's 83 now, and she's 78. Oh, that's awesome. The couple had five kids in less than 10 years. Then Harold's job took a toll, and they split up in 1967. Oh, I thought this was a good story. He admits that it was all his fault, and he was working too much, and he eventually got remarried about eight years later, but his wife passed away back in 2015. Lillian's been remarried twice, but her husband also died in 2015. Then a few months ago, they both showed up at a family reunion and started talking. They'd stayed friends after their divorce, but they weren't all that close anymore. But after they reconnected at the reunion, they started talking over the phone every day. What? And then they started dating again. Yay! True love prevails! (laughs) And only an 83-year-old and a 78-year-old talk on the phone every day. That's true. The next week, and oh, and next week, Harold and Lillian are getting remarried more than 50 years after they originally split up. Are you happy if you're their kids or you're like, hey, thanks for putting us through that divorce (laughs) and you could have done this a lot sooner. It was one big test, So you guys, yeah, yeah, one big long (laughs) test to see how you'd handle it. Yeah, you passed. One of it. one of their grandkids <laughs> is a minister in New Orleans, and he's doing the ceremony. Lillian says that she and Harold have a, a lot in common still, oh, well. and even though they got divorced, he has he he says they never really fell out of love with each other. Awesome. Uh, yeah, awesome for them. Not awesome for their other wives and husbands that they <laughs> have. <laughs> this next laser story is out of Beer Headquarters. Ooh. Bud Light Lime debuted ten years ago, and it was a big hit. Oh my god, I hate to admit that I like it. It's a big hit until yeah. until it wasn't a big hit. Yeah. A reporter earlier this year found its sales had dropped 35.5% over the past five years. Because it's not exactly the cool thing to drink. That's like, true. If you, dr- if you pull that out at a party, you're yeah, getting blasted, dude. 35.5% is the biggest drop of any American beer. So instead of closing up shop, Bud Light's strategy is to apparently double down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because Bud Light Lime just got itself a cousin called Bud Light Orange. Yeah. And it's showing up in stores around the country. Yeah, baby. Is it like like Hefeweizen? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big question. How does it taste? Here are some quotes from people on BeerAdvocate.com. It's honestly not terrible, somebody said. Okay, that's actually a pretty good review for Bud. (laughs) Somebody said it's more like soda than a beer, which I think might attract a lot of people because not that many people really actually like beer. They just drink it to get drunk. It smells and tastes exactly like somebody mixed Bud Light and Orange Fanta, which doesn't sound bad, actually. That's probably what they did. And why haven't I been mixing those two things all this time? (laughs) Someone else said it tastes like artificial orange, corn, and citrus. But night, but might not be too bad on a hot summer afternoon. Oh. So just okay. Kind of yeah, okay. not horrible on a summer day. <laughs> it's a great review. Yeah. This next major story is out of the study of work. A new survey asked Americans what they'd be willing to give up in exchange for a 10% pay raise. Okay. Keep in mind the average American salary is fifty-two thousand dollars a year, so people would do this stuff for a fifty-two hundred dollar raise, or roughly one hundred and forty dollars more per paycheck after taxes. Okay. Here are the results: fifty-six percent would work an extra ten hours per week for life, and fifty percent would work six days a week for the next year. 
Okay. Wow. In order to get a 10% raise. For the next year, it makes sense. For life, it's like, okay, yeah. 10% if you got it, maybe 10% every year. Yeah. yeah but... True. <laughs> 40% would give up all their dental care. Who needs teeth yeah. when you got $5,200 <laughs> over the course of a year? That's not really going to save you money, guys. I can buy new ones. 19% yeah. say they go with no health insurance at all. Whoa. All right. Listen, hey. we, we need to talk about your cost efficiency. <laughs> I did that for like seven years, but that wasn't by choice. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't have it. I didn't have it, right? Yeah. <laughs> 35% of people would give up their right to vote for life for a 10% pay raise. And what? 9% would give away their child's right to vote for life. <laughs> Well, it's easy. I know it's easy to give away their rights. Yeah. Twelve percent would break up with their significant other, and five percent would eat a Tide Pod. Of course they would. I like how that's the lowest on the list. I hope that five percent didn't give up their health insurance before they (laughs) ate the Tide Pod. This next laser story is out of survey land. A new survey found that twenty percent of parents have been caught in the act by their kids. Oh man. Oh man. About a quarter of them just admitted that they were being intimate, but two-thirds came up with a quick lie about what they were doing. Here are the seven most popular excuses parents use when getting caught in the act by their children. Number seven, we were searching for magic treasure. (laughs) And we found it. Yeah, Yeah, high five, kid. Um, Number six, we were having an argument. Oh, that's why you were yelling. Oh, because there was so much noise. (laughs) Which can be really awkward because kids do pick up on things you do, and the next yeah. time they get frustrated, they're like, ah, ah, and everyone's like, what are you, I'm frustrated, that's the frustrated sound my mommy makes when they're arguing. And I'm jumping on the bed because there's a lot of bed noise <laughs> yeah. too. Okay. Number five, oh, we were yeah. playing a new sport. Oh. Yeah. Number four, we were tickling each other. That's a good one. Yeah. Number three, we were just moving around in bed a lot. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't get comfortable. Yeah. Couldn't get, this isn't comfortable. Number two, we were play fighting. Yeah. Okay. And the number one excuse that parents use when kids walk in on them being romantic is, we were cuddling. Oh, yeah. we oh were that's cuddling. sweet. Yeah. I cuddled <laughs> well, hard today. I, I was mean... cuddling hard. <laughs> I don't think they say that. I don't want to know about your cuddling anymore. Speaking of somebody who cuddles hard, this guy. <laughs> right? That's the sound of a turtle humping a shoe, which means that Laser Stories has come to an end for the day. We'll do it again. Same time on Friday. Sixty seconds away from your shock caller question of the day. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. Before we get into the shock caller this morning, if you are in an unhappy relationship, oh, well, congratulations let's... because you've come to the right place. Really? But there's one thing this show is good at. It's learning how to bicker and argue correctly in relationships. <laughs> wow, guys, I'm glad we're here for a pick me up this morning. Yeah, right. All you gotta do is listen to the second date updates. That's we know a, a thing point. or two about. Bad relationships. Yeah, or the totally. awkward Tuesday phone calls. Any of that. Or, okay. anything we do. Yeah. But a team of couples therapists recently came out with a list of the top five phrases that you should never say during an argument with your significant <laughs> other. All right. Number five, you never do this or you always do that. Oh, I always. Stay away from that one. I always say that. You do? Yeah, and <laughs> Michael, my husband, gets so mad at me. He's, He's like, like, I don't, it's not always, Brooke. Yeah. Like, semantics, whatever. Get over it. <laughs> Number four, 
Never say, I'll talk to you when you can be rational. <laughs> maybe use another word, like, hey, come back to me when you're civil, maybe. Yeah. Oh. When you're calm, what about? but rational, meaning, not like, talk to me when you're not being crazy. That's yeah. what I was going to say. What Stop about? being ridiculous and then come talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, I never had this problem with my ex. Oh! Try to steer clear of that Ooh, one. That will just escalate better. the argument for sure. Unless you want to be single. Everyone's different. <laughs> Number two, why are you making such a big deal over nothing? Uh, oh, right? I said Classic. That. I know I've said all of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I have too. Like, wow. You're being crazy. I'm kind yeah. of a like, crappy partner. It's apparently. better to go, wow, huh. this is a really big deal for you. Yeah. Let's find out why. Yeah. Because I feel like it's nothing. Yeah. Don't, well, don't add the last part. <laughs> And number one, you're such a bleep. Mm. They say name calling is probably going to make an argument about, much worse oh, rather yeah. than make it better. Unless you say knucklehead at the end of that. <laughs> then it might, yeah. <laughs> that might get you a laugh and, yeah. it. and be like, I'm a what? I'm a... Okay, come here and give me a hug. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Those are some phrases that you should not use in an argument with your significant other. Or Never use them use. if you really, really, really want to get the argument started. <laughs> All right, let's get into the shot caller question of the day. Young Jeffrey is coming to the studio with a hat full of names. We'll draw a name out of the hat to see who will put on the shock collar today. They're asked a trivia question. If they get it right, they don't get shocked. Jeff does because he asked a terrible question. If they get it wrong, they get shocked. So the song that you want us to sing, text in at 78592. What song do you want to hear from the person who gets shocked today? Jose is drawing a name out of the hat, and I'm guessing from that sound you got yourself. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, it's Jubal. All right. Jose's got the shock collar while he's putting that on. Jeff. Please read Jose the shock caller question of the day. Recently, Food and Wine magazine came out with a list breaking down the most important foods that were introduced to the U.S. for each decade going back a hundred years that changed American cuisine. For example, they said in the 1970s, it was the California sushi roll. In the 90s, it was lettuce wraps. And in the 2010s, it was Doritos Locos Tacos. <laughs> But what was named as the most important food of the 1910s that was introduced to America back then and is still holding strong today? Whoa, 1910. I have an idea. Okay, tell me. Chocolate chip cookie. Hey, that's really good. But is it something, it was something that was introduced overseas? Is that, did you say that in the question or just introduced? probably brought from. Just introduced. Just introduced, introduced to America in okay, the 1910s. Okay, okay. So that does insinuate that it was Probably brought from Europe or from obviously no, other because Doritos Locos Tacos is definitely a homegrown creature. No, for sure. <laughs> you know, like well, I think he just means introduce. Like here it is oh, okay. to the world. Hmm. It could be from someone right here in the okay. states. Okay. Chocolate chip cookies is really good. <clears throat> it's got to be something simple. This is this is my thought process. It's got to be something easy. You know, sushi Ooh. wasn't big, or what about the, it was just the fish, I guess. What about the burrito? What, isn't it the story with the burritos that it was like cowboys out in the wild west that yeah. didn't have bread and needed really? to? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Burritos aren't actually like Mexican food, really. No, it's like, like a, cowboy food. They're like I southwest cowboy food, yeah. right? Oh. Read the question one more time, Jeff. Recently, Food & Wine magazine came out with a list breaking down the most important foods that were introduced to the U.S. for oh. each decade, going back a hundred years that changed American cuisine. What was named as the most important food of the 1910s? It's so simple, and I know it was introduced a long, long time ago, mac and cheese. Oh, not bad. Like, one of the presidents, I think, was the first people to... Oh, yeah, that's right. I think we yeah. already asked something like that yeah, in the shot like, like a it long time a ago. Even. So, so mac and cheese or burrito then? I also it's up to you. Jello. It's your, Jello your question. So <laughs> know, you are you asking yourself that? Uh, <laughs> I would go chocolate chip cookie, I think. I think I'm going to go mac and cheese. Come on, Jose. Do this on your own, buddy. Yeah. Talk to yourself <laughs> like you're a different person. Food and Wine magazine came out with a list of the most important foods that were introduced to American cuisine for each decade. In the 70s, it was the California sushi roll. The 90s was lettuce wraps. In 2010s, was Doritos Locos Tacos. But in the 1910s, a dish was introduced in New York City when a German immigrant was working at a restaurant and oh. introduced a smaller, cheaper spin on the famous German sausage oh. and gave America their beloved. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Oh. Of course. <laughs> right. Oh, man. All good guesses, though. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you got it wrong. And wow, somebody wanted to hear Sugar Sugar by Baby Bash. You oh, remember that song? Wow. Before you get shocked. So here's the lyrics for that. Uh, 
You ready? Yep. You got me lifted, shifted, higher than a ceiling. <laughs> and ooh wee, it's the ultimate feeling. You got me lifted, feeling so gifted. Sugar, how'd you get so fly? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that song. Yeah. Sugar, sugar, why'd you get so All right, your phone tap's coming up in just a few minutes. Bradley Johnson with 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Not getting behind the wheel after drinking is the best choice. But if you're pulled over, the next best choice is to call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. It's another Jubal phone tap. And weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on moving 92.5. Hello? Hi, this is Seth McElroy. I'm calling from Amazon. I was looking for Jacob. Yeah, this is Jacob. Hey, Jacob, how are you? I'm with the Customer Care Division, and we noticed recently that you just bought a Kindle. Yeah. That's great to hear. Something that you might not know, though, is that we also offer the Amazon Echo. That's a smart speaker that's voice-controlled. Some people call it Alexa. You might have heard of that. Yes, uh, I'm familiar with that. Well, you can use it for all types of things like, uh, Alexa, read the news, or Alexa, tell me the weather in Peru, and she will tell you. Things like that. That's, that's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And according to our records, you don't have an Amazon Echo, and you should get one. Yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe more than one. Gee, okay. So how many Echoes can I put you down for? Three, four? Well, more? no, I mean, I, I well. More, more than four? No, it would be something I have to, I, I'd have to think about, but. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well, you can always log on to your Kindle and buy one later if you want. No, okay, yeah. So going back to your Kindle, would you like to get another one? Some people buy 12. I, what did you just say? I said some people have as many as 12. I mean, I'm sure maybe some have more, but the average is 12, yeah. I have one for every room in my house. That seems convenient. Yeah. I, have, uh, I have three Kindles in my garage, just in case. You're trying to just sell me stuff from Amazon? Is that what's going on here? No, no, I was just calling to check up on the Kindle that you bought and had a few notes, you know, so thought I'd go over those. Well, then, I mean, they seem a little bit excessive. I, I don't know why you would. This would be. This is what you're going over with me. I mean, if well, you let's want. think about this scenario for a second. Let's say you had eight Kindles and six Echoes. You could play music from everywhere in your house and then sync them together, and they could all be friends and talk to each other. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't care if you think it's. I mean, no offense, but this is what. What is this call about? You would. I don't care if you think it's awesome. It well, seems excessive and stupid. I just want to make a few suggestions for you because I noticed that you bought something from our website, and I. Okay. Right, right. You well, I appreciate that, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think your suggestions are helpful in any way. I, I don't know why you're well, wasting my let's time. Let's say you only had two Alexas. Listen, I don't need more than one Alexa or Sophie or whoever. But okay, so I don't need any more. You don't need more than one, so you'd like one? No, I don't. I no, I don't. Because I asked you about the Alexas earlier. You said you weren't interested, but now you said no, you don't I need more yeah, than I one. I said, I, okay, okay. You, uh, now you're just putting words in my mouth. I said I'd look into it. That's what I said. Okay. okay. Oh, but you said you don't need more than one, so that means that you want me to get you one, right? What I said was I was going to think about this. So this is really getting frustrating. Okay. At this well, point. It, well, I, I well yeah, it is getting kind of frustrating because I'm getting mixed messages from you. Yeah, I'm not giving messages. I'm telling you exactly. what I told you that I'm. I'm wouldn't. I don't want one. I don't need any more than one. Or I don't. Okay. Need you don't one need any all. more than one. Okay. I so don't you... need one. I don't need one. <laughs> Okay. You know what? I'm sorry. That is my fault. I was too focused on the Amazon Echo. I completely spaced on the Kindles. How many Kindles was I sending out to you? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I'm yeah, I know. I know. I'm so sorry about that. The last point I'll bring up is what if you got two Alexas? Because no, they, I'm... Dude. Well, then they could talk to each other like friends. You'd have no, I, friend Alexas just gabbing away. To me. No. I don't need two gadgets gabbing away or talking to each other. This is just crazy. I'm sorry. Your phone broke up. You said you'd need that? No, I don't need that. Oh, Did you get that? don't need that. I don't need any of them. I don't. This is bullshit. This is a bunch of bullshit. I no, it's not. They actually do that. Any echoes. Okay, but sir, here I have. A, I do have. A, I do have a little bit of an issue with something you said. You said it was BS, and that is not those yeah, things. It is, it is BS. It's bullshit. This is garbage. Oh, no. You're, this is f***ing okay. outrageous. But it, but why, why, I, 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 oh, I don't even I'm know why so I'm so sorry. Alive. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You think that I'm lying to you about the echoes being I able to talk to each other? Well, you said it was BS. So you don't believe me about that? Jesus, I feel like I'm talking to my wife. Well, that's interesting, because you kind of are. What the f*** is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that she set you up for this prank phone call, because this is actually Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning doing a phone tap on you, and your wife Pauline set you up. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> she... Holy sh Really? Yeah, she said that you ordered a Kindle off of Amazon and wanted to prank you. <laughs> Although you probably want me to leave the last part out about talking to her. No, no, no. <laughs> Keynotes. 
She knows exactly how she frustrates me. <laughs> Wake up every morning with Jubal phone tabs. Weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on Moving 92.5. Are you going for seven wins in a row today, Brooke? All right, lucky and number. You're going to be playing Michelle in Port Angeles. What's up, Michelle? Hey, Jubal. Hey, Michelle. Uh, I'm so nervous. I Michelle, know you are. <laughs> you are way too peppy to be on this show. <laughs> a little nervous laughter. Yeah. Michelle, right. do you think you can beat Brooke today? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, you're confident right. about that. Okay, Michelle. <laughs> well, keep that positive attitude because you're about to get destroyed, but I like your positivity. <laughs> okay, we're sending Brooke out oh. of the studio. Oh, we got, well, go ahead, Michelle. What are you going to say? Oh, well, I am nervous, but I'm going to keep a positive attitude. That's good. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you believe it, you can achieve it. Yes. That's why right. I still have a chance at the NBA someday. Because I believe it will happen. Just gotta believe, man. Just gotta believe. All right, Michelle, Brooke is out of the studio. The game is played like this. you got 30 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know one, just say pass that. You have to beat Brooke outright to win, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. Your time starts now. In the stock market, if share prices are rising, it's known as a bear or bull market. Bull. What TV personality is a producer and the host of the show The Voice? Pass. When the Titanic sank in 1912, what city was it headed to? New York City. The largest warehouse in the world is located in Everett and owned by what company? Boeing. What is Japan's national flower? Uh, cherry blossom. There are only five states in America with no sales tax. Oregon is one of them. Name another. New Jersey. Okay. Wow. Pretty confident no. about no? Okay, I was going to say you are confident about that last one, and then you said no right away. Okay. We'll bring Brooke back into the studio. So, Michelle, what do you do for a living? I work as a dialysis technician. Oh, wow. Can I get some of that? Um, only if you have kidney failure. Yeah, yeah I'm trying. <laughs> I just want to hang out with you. You seem very nice. Did you just say you're trying to have kidney failure? Yeah, because I want dialysis from Michelle. No, only don't. from Michelle, though. Only from Michelle. <laughs> okay. And from nobody else. Okay. When my kidneys do fail, Michelle, and they will at some point, yeah. I want you to do the dialysis. Call it right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. We thank you. We try to make it fun. Well, yeah, we I can tell you. Fun. Like, oh, I feel like you would sweet. do like a puppet show and everything while I'm yeah. sitting there. All oh, right. yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> Brooke is back in the studio with her headphones on. You ready? Yeah. All right. Your time starts now. In the stock market, if share prices are rising, it's known as a bear or bull market. Bull. What TV personality is a producer and the host of the show The Voice? Uh, Ryan Seacrest. When the Titanic sank in 1912, what city was it headed to? Uh, New York. The largest warehouse in the world is located in Everett and owned by what company? Amazon. What is Japan's national flower? Uh, cherry blossom. There are only five states in America with no sales tax. Oregon is one of them. Name another. Montana. What is the name of the metal that is used as fuel in nuclear reactors? Uh, oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uranium. All right. Let's send it over to the scoreboard and see how you guys did with Jose. I notice you have oh, Brooke very more than large me. frontals. Melanios. <laughs> Michelle, you did awesome today. You got four correct. Ooh, dang, Michelle. That's, that's good. That's the most. And in I said, it was not right. <laughs> Brooke, yes. you did get an extra question in. And. Oh. Five correct. Oh. Wow. Oh. High scoring game today. And good job, Michelle, but not enough to get you the $100. Brooke gets her oh, seventh win in a row. Okay. You okay, Congratulations, Michelle? Congratulations, okay. bro. Oh, you too, Michelle. <laughs> we'll go over the answers. If the stock market, in the stock market, if share prices are rising, that's known as a bull market. It's a bear market if it's dropping. What TV personality is a producer and the host of the show, The Voice, Carson Daly. Oh, I always forget God. about that guy. He's I won know. four Emmy Awards as a producer. Yeah, me too. And then you hear his name, you're like, oh, yeah, I he's forgot. still around. Yeah. I just heard host and producer, and then I missed the voice. It was yeah, yeah, that's a listening exercise. I know this. Come on. <laughs> when the Titanic sank in 1912, what city was it headed to? New York, left from Southampton, England. The largest warehouse in the world is located in Everett, and it's owned by Boeing, 4.3 million square feet. What is Japan's national flower? It's a cherry blossom. There are only five states in America with no sales tax. Oregon is one of them. Name another. Delaware, New Hampshire, Montana, or Alaska would have all been answers. And what is the name of the metal that's used as fuel in nuclear reactors? Uranium. Yes. 
So I'm sorry, Michelle, you didn't get the hundred dollars. Oh, that's okay. It was fun just getting to play. Oh, oh so good you know what, Michelle, I like you. We all do. I speak to you guys in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I talk to you at home all the time. You never answer me back. <laughs> talk to us. Oh my gosh! I really like you, Michelle. Just for playing today, you got a digital yeah. download of the movie Star Wars The Last Jedi, okay? Wow, that's awesome. All right. Yeah, there you go. Take care. <laughs> we'll play Winbrook's Bucks same time tomorrow. Moving 92.5.